I can't read. This article is in the comment section under one of my videos. It is a long article. I'm going to read most of it. And as I'm reading it, think about Hurricane Harvey, Irma, Maria. Think about the fires. It was brought out very clearly this past year, the great fire season of the year 2000, in which we literally saw nearly 7 million acres burn up, primarily in southern Idaho and Montana, but really all over the western United States. It was a bad fire year. We were going to have a lot of fires, a lot of major fires. The problem was that because of this belief system, that permeates the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management now. Many of these fires, <coughs> the actual fire officials argued for as many as three days before they lifted the first shovel against those fires, whether or not they should send bulldozers in to build fire lines because they may rip out a plant or two of an endangered species. Three days. As this fire continues to burn, and the eeriest part about this is there is not a firefighter in sight. We have not heard a siren. We have not seen a fire truck. Nothing. And that is exactly like what we've been talking about all morning. These firefighters are trying to save people's lives. And so now that they know that everyone has been evacuated from the Hilton Sonoma wine country, they know there's nothing they can do. It is just going to burn. <laughs>
when you when you get that over a million homes were flooded in Houston and the surrounding area. Where are all of those people? They're never going to go back home, so they want to help them as much so that they're never just walking out of care feeling like they're going back onto the street. They work with them throughout the process here to help them adjust to this new world order that they are they're going to be living in afterwards. If you found yourself some shelter here, why why are you outside during this entire hurricane? Well, I chose not to go inside yesterday because the Salvation Army and the uh, Russian Winds Homeless Shelter, where they were accepting people, were caught killing everybody that was in there. It was a war zone down there, and it was it was bad, and it still is bad. And these agencies are still trying to go in there and put their foot in the door and keep control of things, but they're fucking killing people. The body count is way higher than what it, than what it ever is being said. The propaganda they're spouting on TV about how things are getting better in our life. They're spraying neurotoxins, saying that they're trying to kill out the mosquitoes. And some of these things are like Agent Orange and others that they are now spraying the populace with. And it's ridiculous. And people need to know the story about what's happening down the Texas coast. Not only the fact that they're doing this shit, but also the fact these guys, these average bass boat dudes, <laughs> these people who are down there pulling people out of their houses, they're the real heroes. Don't listen to this bullshit about these government search and rescue missions that are going on, because I didn't see any of that shit. I saw them locking roads down. I saw SWAT going after the civilians who were using their boats to save people. And I saw them locking people in without evacuating them and then flood them in their homes to the point where they needed to be rescued out of there. You ask anybody on the coast what was going on down there, you're going to hear some of the same fucking stories. Seen it in Fox News and other people that are lying to you about what happened down there. And I'm sure it's going on in Florida at this point in time, especially with the other hurricanes that are coming in. I've had people ask me everything, the Terry Movement or my training and other areas I'm not going to talk about. Um, I put my elbow directly on my gun as soon as he tried to grab it smacked his arm away and had to inform him I was going to shoot him in his head if he tried to touch my gun again because they were trying to take over and threaten our operation of protecting Texans so that they could get away with whatever they were getting away with hiding bodies uh, covering up things that were going on I some of the neighborhoods that those guys were going into were the richest neighborhoods and were involved in um, I believe government looting or private contract looting. So we slept in the back corner of the pastor's office. Thank you. 
keeping them right over Houston for three to four days, and the deliberate release of the reservoirs. That had they not released those res reservoirs, so many people would be in their homes today. But they're not. So, as I read this article, I did have in mind everything that we are living now. And it's a hard article to read because you are reading something that, well, many of us speculate about with all of the disasters that are taking place today. But reading about this disaster in Florida, Hurricane Andrew, um, you'll see how these disasters are handled by authorities. And this is written by a woman who lived, lived, survived Hurricane Andrew. She says, the authorities grossly understated the death toll from Hurricane Andrew, the worst natural disaster in U.S. history, and left thousands of survivors to die in a zone contaminated by radiation. The largest natural disaster ever recorded in the history of the United States was Hurricane Andrew, which struck South Dade County, Florida, as midnight turned the clock into August 24, 1992, contrary to what the American news media broadcast across the United States and throughout Europe, the first outer wall of the hurricane unexpectedly slammed into South Bay, packing 214-mile-per-hour winds, which quickly escalated to 350-mile-per-hour winds. Most of the 414,151 residents living in the danger zone were asleep when the outer wall struck. Thousands of them lost their lives. For no one in South Dade had been evacuated or even advised to evacuate. Instead, residents had been repeatedly informed by local news media that South Dade, Dade should expect to experience 50 miles per hour. By 11 a.m. and the following morning, 8,230 mobile homes, along with 9,140 apartments, had vanished off the face of the earth. The Hiroshima, like horror, was beyond catastrophic. Entire families perished in ways too horrifying to describe. The stench of death had already begun to saturate miles and miles of the mass devastation. The hot, humid air was reeking with foul, rotting flesh. How do I know? Because I was in the midst of it all. Never will I forget the frantic last-minute emergency alert broadcast, broadcast that was aired on television just before all hell broke loose. My son and I had the TV on, hoping to catch an updated report on the hurricane when the screen suddenly went blank with a loud warning signal. Before we knew it, a panic-stricken voice began the announcement. We interrupt this program to bring you an emergency alert from the National Broadcast Emergency Center. This is an emergency alert. I repeat, this is an emergency alert. The outer winds of Hurricane Andrew have just reached the Florida coast. Hurricane Andrew was, uh, sorry, Hurricane Andrew has unexpectedly shifted five degrees south. I repeat, Hurricane Andrew has shifted five degrees south. Andrew is expected to strike South Dade within minutes. I repeat, Andrew is expected to strike South Dade within minutes. All South Dade residents should take immediate cover. I repeat, all South Dade residents should take immediate cover. This is an emergency alert. Our tiny prefab apartment, which was nothing more than a glorified mobile home, had been constructed to withstand maximum wind speeds of 90 miles per hour. The blood-curdling announcement gripped us both, paralyzed by sheer terror. Our bulging eyes stayed glued to the television as the voice continued. All South Dade residents 
are advised to stay put. Do not attempt to leave the area. Shelter in place. Within seconds, we actually heard Hurricane Andrew bearing down on us, slamming into us with all the force of a speeding locomotive. The horrendous walls of wind crashed against our tiny apartment like an exploding bomb. Glasses flew off the kitchen counter, shattering onto the quaking floor. Hanging pictures plunged straight down the walls toward the, ga uh, the ground. The huge hanging mirror crashed on top of the television set, spraying the living room with shattered glass. The entire apartment resembled a rickety old train shaking fiercely out of control while rumbling down a railroad track. The screeching winds quickly transformed into the piercing monotone hum of a jet engine, jet engine sounding as if it had sucked us inside. It was so deafening. All other noises ceased to exist. It felt like a monstrous earthquake and tornado hitting at the same time. Before either one of us could react, the metal front door of our apartment began to peel steadily to downward towards the floor, like a piece of wet, limp paper. Then the voracious jaws of Andrew attacked for the final kill, a mega-giant, two-story tall, solid concrete transformer pole with electrical cables attached, torpedoed right through our living room, wall, and roof exploding the entire building on impact and that was just the beginning atrocities in the aftermath there, there isn't a person on the face of this earth who will ever convince me that hurricane andrew was a hurricane by any sense of the definition just ask any survivor of andrew what the six and a half hour siege was like. Published following September 1st, 2017, the news reporter openly admits the weather machine listened. Thank you. 